What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's T5 day again today. We need to get the engine back in this hole. I'm excited to get it up and running and move on with the project. Had a few more parts delivered and we've finally got enough bits to get cracking. I'm excited to get on with this. So let's have a quick recap and let's just get straight into it. Our year, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, we've got a 1.9 TDI T5 transporter that's done nearly 300,000 miles. We've got it as a project. We want to put a new front end on it, repaint it, lower it, make it look pretty. First thing I want to get done is get the engine running absolute sweet. We have got the old engine block here, and uh, as you can see, it's pretty minging. It run well, but it boiled over, it pressurized like head gasket gone. In the last video, we took the head off. We saw that the head gasket had rusted out, which caused the coolant system to pressurize as soon as you were running. Anyway, out with that, and we've got a PD-130 engine to go in. PD-130 out of a Skoda Octavia. It's the ASZ engine code, 115,000 miles. We've confirmed all this. I have cleaned and painted a few bits to make them look a bit prettier. While it's out, might as well give them a clean and a paint. Rather than fit loads of greasy parts back in, we've given it a clean and a paint, and yeah, We've got all the bits, it's ready to go back in. I haven't masticked the sump back on, I'll talk about that in a minute. There's a couple of bits I wanted to do before it went back in. I did mention in the last video that we got a new radiator pack. The main cooling radiator on the van had burst, pressurized, leaking, so we needed another radiator and the intercooler, the end of the pipe had completely blown out. So we needed a replacement intercooler too. I did get a complete rad pack from a later model that was from a two litre and I believed it would fit. Anyway, the main piece I need, radiator, doesn't fit. <sighs> intercooler fits, aircon radiator fits and a few other bits. We need the intercooler, so happy days. I have ordered a brand new radiator, that's coming later today. So as soon as I get the engine in, we will have the radiator to crack back on. Let's get this engine back in. I'm gonna put the sump on. I've got some instant gasket maker. You don't have a gasket on the sump on a PD engine. You just have some silicon, basically. It's not silicon. It is a gasket sealer. So if you didn't see the last video, this is the sump off the T5. It's slightly bigger, so it holds a bit more oil for capacity and stuff. Happy days. It has been cleaned and painted. It's not bonded down. We'll get to that in a minute. But on the T5 transporter, they have a mount on the back and a mount on the front, engine mounts. And they bolt into these corresponding holes on the back and the front of the block. On the T5, that's fine. On the PD-130, which is from a car, ASZ engine code, there's a couple of these that aren't used in the Skoda. So before we start bolting any engine mounts to it, the corresponding bolt holes on the Skoda engine aren't used. They are there and the threads are there, but the threads aren't, they haven't been used, so they're a little bit corroded. So we've got an M10 tap and a M8 tap, and any that you line the engine mount up with, you just want to clean the threads out. You could probably just wang the bolt in there, but you don't want to cross thread anything. You don't want to knacker any bolt holes up. So I just get an M10 tap and I have run through all the bolt holes that weren't used that are now going to be used. If you don't have an M8 or an M10 tap, you can just get an M8 bolt or an M10 bolt. And let me show you. There's an M10 bolt. I have got a stud with an M10 on one end and an M8 on the other end. But just to show you, I've got an angle grinder with a really thin disc and I've cut a little groove in it. And what that does, it acts the same as a tap. If you just try wanging a normal bolt in a rusty hole, then it's gonna bind up and you've got nowhere for the material that needs cleaning off to go. So to make your own tap, M8, M10, this works for any aspect in life. It's not gonna last as long as a tap because it's not hardened still like a tap. Uh, just cut a little groove with your, with your grinder and that way, you can tap any bolts out or any threads out. And if I wang this in, let's pick one that wasn't used in the back here. I have already done these. You wind it in and out. And then when you pull it out, you'll find that in the grooves that you've cut with a thin angle grinder, you'll find all the, uh, the stuff that needs cleaning out. 
and yeah, that was the same on the back and the front. I've lined my engine mounts up, they fit perfect. So the actual block from a PD-130 is the same as the T5 transporter engine. And what's the reason for putting a PD-130 and not just another T5 engine? If you've ever looked for a T5 transporter engine, the 1.9 TDIs, they are a lot of money. And, and I'm talking a, a couple of grand just for an engine. You can pick up these ASZ engines, the PD-130s, which are actually stronger for a fraction of the cost. So cost effective and for a stronger engine, PD-130 swap, the blocks are the same, they're a lot cheaper, so why not? Anyway, taps out the way, put those aside, and uh, I haven't put the, the gearbox on or the clutch or the flywheel or anything. When putting a gearbox on or putting a different engine from a different vehicle, always make sure that these dowels are the same as when you took it off on the block you took it off or in the gearbox because sometimes you pull a gearbox off and these dowels will get stuck in your gearbox or they'll get stuck in the block. So when you go to put another engine or another gearbox in, just make sure that your dowels are the same as in the block or gearbox you've taken off because a couple of times in the past, many years ago, I've gone to put a gearbox on and, they, uh, and it won't close up. Turns out there's two dowels in the engine and then there was one stuck in the gearbox. Easy to forget or overlook, but just have a little butcher's before you go trying to wrestle something on. And that's the same with the head. If you pull a head off and go to put a used head on from a different vehicle, make sure your dowels are in the same place and you haven't got too many. We've got the new crankshaft oil seal on. We've got the T5 sump and the T5 oil pickup pipe. Because we've got a deeper sump, this oil pickup pipe is a bit longer. Um, yeah, we've got all the windage tray from the T5. I have given it a bit of a clean up in there. You want to clean up, and I have cleaned in the sump. You want to clean as much as possible because if you've ever done a, an oil change on a diesel, you put fresh oil in it, you fire it up, two seconds later you check the dipstick and your oil is black again. Well, that's because there's loads of crap and sediment throughout the bottom of the block so if you want to clean it while it's apart, might as well. Uh, yeah, it's just prolonging the life of your engine. I want it to last as long as possible. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're going to get on with the gasket sealer. Now look, I'm sure you don't want to hear, if he says, I'm sure you don't want to hear the boring bits on putting gasket sealer on. But if you do have to use a gasket sealer, this is a Wins Black gasket maker. If you do have to use this rather than a gasket, it's easy to put too much on. Now, if you put too much on, when you bolt the sump up, you're gonna get loads splurging out the side. But not only is it splurging out the side, it's also splurging inside. And what that does after time, the splurgy bits that are hanging on the inside, that breaks off and falls in the bottom of the sump. That's all gonna end up in this oil pickup pipe, which is acting as a hoover. It's constantly sucking oil. So if you get a load of bits of gasket sealant in there, blocks them holes up, knackers your engine. I'm gonna quickly apply some of this and I'll show you how much I put on and what isn't too much. Now look, we've got about a five or a six mil bead all the way around the outside and it is consistent. We've, we don't need to rub it in, we don't need to smooth it off. And as you can see, I've gone around the inside of the bolt holes. You don't need to go around both sides. Make sure you go around the inside of the bolt holes because if you go around the outside, you're going to get oil still coming in the bolt holes and probably leaking out of the sump, and we don't want that. Normally, if you're fitting a sump, you'd apply the gasket sealant to the sump, fitting it upside down because the engine's still in the motor. But because the block's upside down, might as well apply it to the block. I'm going to get the sump on, do all the bolts up, and uh, yeah, flip it back over. We can get the clutch and the flywheel on, make the gearbox to the engine, get the engine hoist back in and fit it because I am gonna fit the block on its own and that way I can bolt the head down nicely with the bottom end bolted in the motor. Let's get the sump on. So we have got the sump back on. That was nice and straightforward, happy days. Clutch and flywheel back on and the gearbox back on. We're, using, we're reusing the clutch and the flywheel from the last engine because the guy I brought it off 
had only just had a new clutch and flywheel before he parked it up. And I confirmed this, it was brand new. So we've reused it. When reusing a dual mass clutch, you need to reset some of them. Because once you've done it up, then undone it, the self-adjusting part has de-adjusted. So I reset my clutch with a pulley puller, clamp it down, turn the springs, undo it whilst holding it turned, and uh, that resets it. There is more guides on the internet, a bit better than mine. But anyway, we're ready to go. As mentioned, I'm just gonna fit the block and the gearbox. Reason for that is I wanna bolt my head down with the engine bolted in. Um, we haven't got the engine mount on this end. We can get one on the end, on the gearbox end, one on the back, one on the front. We load it up. I believe we're ready to go. It might be a bit of shimmy ah, shimmy a. Eh? And if I remember how I got it out, it was a bit like twisting and then drop it in. Um, we'll find out. You want to try and tuck things out the way, like gearbox, gear selectors, and I have got the slave cylinder tucked out the way. Oh, it was tucked out the way. That way, when you're going back in, you're not going to snag anything and bust any hoses. The last thing you want to do is start costing yourself more monies. It's nice to have someone helping you. But as you can see, I don't have the pleasure of that. I could go and get someone, but I like to do it on me ones. Because when someone helps you, it's always a bit of a rush. They've got things to do, so you end up rushing so they can get back to what they was doing. And when you rush, things go wrong. So I'd rather take my time, do it myself. And what I have done, when I took the engine out, it was on axle stands with the wheels off so I could get to these lower gearbox mounts easily. Well, I forgot to do that this time. So I've got a shimmy under. It's relatively in place. I believe it needs to go left a bit more. I'm gonna shimmy under get the two end gearbox bolts in and then we can put the front and the back mount and that should be enough. Let's get it done. Oh, well that was easy. Not, that's the courier. Just dropped my radiator off, happy days. Um, gearbox is bolted down. Now, or should I say bolted up, I need to come up a bit more, but I can't because my engine hoist is again hitting the top, so I need to readjust again. Put the back mount on, the front mount on, and then hopefully three of them are sufficient so I can uh, get the hoist out of the way and take this massive engine hoist back to the guy I borrowed it from because it is taking up loads of space in the workshop and killing my life right off. Uh, yeah, let's roll the time lapse. Oh, yeah. It is the start of day two. Got the bottom end in, got the flywheel clutch, all that together. We've got the air con pump, the fuel filter. No, we've got the oil filter housing, engine mounts,
gear selectors, starter motor and stuff. Now this is the PD-130, PD-150, they're very similar. The only modification to fit a car engine into a van, i.e. the T5, and I hadn't read it, I just stumbled across it, and that's the, uh, the dipstick tube. The dipstick tube on these isn't removable. Unlike the T5 that's got the dipstick to one end near the T5, the cars have the dipstick tube in the middle. Well, this one isn't removable, so I did have to cut a little notch out of the engine mount. I used a grinder, then I used a belt sander to make it look a bit pretty. We'll, uh, we'll stumble across that again in a minute. We're just going to get the cylinder head back on. Hopefully at the end of the time lapse, you saw me rebuilding the cylinder head. We've got the new valve stem seals in, valves in, and that is about as far as I'm going to go until the head's bolted down. Got the engine ready to go. We've got the gasket in place. I have got the two, uh, the dowels in the block. They're ready. They're holding the head gasket. As you can see, the engine's at top dead center first and last pistons up but when I bolt a head down I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees so all four pistons are even that way when we've rebuilt the cylinder head we put the bolt the camshaft down some of the valves are going to open and if they're not in the right place and two of your pistons are up you're going to end up damaging the valve so if you turn it back 90 degrees from top dead center, once you've bolted the head down, time your head up, then you can pull that back to 90 uh, top dead center, put your bottom locator pin in, all will be well. Anyway, uh, we're ready. I just wanna put a bit of oil in the bores, bolt the head down, one moment. I am keen to get this running. So, little dribble of oil just in the cylinders, it may smoke a tiny bit when you first start it, but I'd rather that than it take 20,000 miles off in the first 10 seconds of running. Because obviously it's bone dry until oil pressure's built up. And even if you wang it over without, say, the crank sensor unplugged, the pistons are still ferociously going up and down. Right, that is done, we're ready. As I say, head gasket is in place. The block has been cleaned with a blade frantically. Then I've cleaned it with a cloth. We've got no debris in there. Cylinder head is ready. I've cleaned this multiple times. I'm just gonna run my hand over it. If you had a bit of grit on there, that would not be good. And look, when I fit a cylinder head, I look down one of the bolt holes because these dowels are hardened steel. You don't want to rest the head in place and then start dragging it around to locate it because you'll end up scratching your cylinder head. Yeah, no good. So I look down one of the bolt holes to line it up and then donk. And when a head drops into place, you do get a fadonk. Hopefully we can hear that. Uh, the bolt holes, head bolt holes, I clean them out, I've tapped them. I didn't have a tap, so what did I do? I got an old head bolt, cut two grooves in it, one side and the other, with a plasma disc on the grinder, a really thin one. Run the bolt in and out a few times. These were clean, but I've done it anyway. We're ready. As I say, I'm gonna look down the head bolt holes to make sure we're in place. Well, that's the fadonk. And now, if I try to move the head, because the dowels, the locators are in place, I can't. The head won't rock, so there's nothing trapped underneath. You can visually inspect. And then if we look round here, I can see that that is sat flush. Happy days. Head bolts, we've got new head bolts, and I have put a skosh, the smallest amount of grease on them, just a tiny bit, because when you're bolting a head down, you don't want any of the torque being friction. Huh? Nearly. Head bolt washers, 
And can you see how easy my head bolts are screwing in? If you can't screw your head bolts in by hand, you need to clean the threads. We've got torque wrench ready. 30 newton meters or newton meters. 60 newton meters, 90 and 90. So we've got three eighth, we've got a super posh snap on digital torque wrench here. Very nice, it's not mine, borrowed it. 30 newton meters. And literally, if you've done a head before, you'll know what's going on. If you haven't done a head before, and you're doing one, take your time. Take your time with anything. If you're unsure, ask questions. And look, I am no mechanic guru. I fix a bit. If there's anything you think I can answer, drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer. Head is all bolted down as we know, and just something I want to mention, I did put the smallest drizzle of oil on the head bolt washer. That just helps when you're doing the head bolts up. It doesn't bind and create friction. They just do up smoothly. We're on to the injector. I've replaced all the seals, new top seals, new bottom seal, and new copper washer. And on the PD, there is actually a little C-clip, but it doesn't sit in a groove. So once you've cleaned inside the washer with a blade, carefully tap that off with a flathead and a hammer and that will slide off. Be careful. Never wire wheel the ends of these. You can give them a wipe with a cloth, but never wire wheel the end. Anyway, new seals. It's squeaky clean. And I've got a service to do. Um, the guy in the workshop down the road from me, he needs a service doing. I don't know why, because he's a body shop and he's booked in a service. But he lets me use his spray booth. So although I don't want to do the service, I want to get straight on with this. He lets me use his spray booth. You always return the favour. Now, if you're going to do this and not replace the seals, have a look at them. Have a good look at them. On this bottom orange seal, there was a big chunk missing. So if I would have fitted that, it would have leaked. So glad I didn't. Uh, plenty of lube on the O-rings. Any O-ring you fit in any vehicle, always use a bit of lube. And that'll help it pop in nicer. That just popped in. I don't know if you heard that. For donk. And it does also come with, in the seal kit, does come with these new top hat things. That's not a new one. So I'll put that there for one minute. We'll put some new ones in. We've got new bolts. <laughs> Look, if you've ever skipped steps and uh, used the same bolts, it's fine. When it comes to injector bolts on a diesel, you must replace them. They are seriously stretch bolts. And if you try reusing them, you'll end up snapping them and then you're in a world of pain, maybe another cylinder head. So make sure you replace the bolts. There's 12 newtons. Now it's 270 degrees. We're back. We've done the service. Got that back to him. He's happy. We got the cylinder head finished in the time lapse. And I've literally lubed every cam lobe with some oil. Because as soon as you first turn it over, if they're dry, you're going to absolutely obliterate stuff. So we've lubed it all up. Got all the injector lume in. And then we have adjusted the injector valve lash. If I scoot down here, the injector valve lash is basically like an adjustable tappet. And what you do is you rotate the cam or the head, remembering that our four pistons are halfway. So if you had two pistons up, you wouldn't be able to rotate the head, otherwise you'd be hitting the, uh, hitting the valves. And you do not want that. No one likes to do a job twice. So while the time... If you've got the timing belt on, that's fine, ignore that last bit, but if you've got the timing belt off, make sure your uh, pistons are nice and even. That way you can keep rotating and not hitting. Anyway, so rotate it, and this one is fully compressed. And how do I know it's fully compressed? 
Well, this cam lobe is right in the center of that circle. When that is fully compressed, that cam lobe will be right in the center, again for that one. And if we go this way, it would be up here on the inside. That's fully compressed. You wind this uh, five, is it five? You wind this six mil hex bit all the way in till it stops. Literally, just as it stops, for donk, you then undo it 180 degrees whilst holding the ratchet or the five mil, six mil hex, and then you do this nut up, which is an 18 to 25 foot pounds. Keep rotating the head and do all four. That way, it won't sound tappy, it will sound really nice. Still need to put the glow plugs in. I will put a bit of non-slip grease on them. Put the glow plugs in, nip them up. Um, yeah, we are getting nearly there. I'm just about to put the rocker cover back on. I'm gonna rest it on for now. That is literally done in there. Happy days. Two jobs to do. I've only got a couple of hours left and I've got to shoot out and then I'll be back again tonight. First one I'll do is the tandem vacuum diesel pump. If you ever have this off, replace the gasket. Non-genuine, uh, non sorry. Genuine one, we've got a dipstick tube, because ours is broke, and we've got a gasket. I know it was 22 pound for genuine VW delivered. Can't beat that really. Tenner for the gasket, tenner for the tube. Ever having a vacuum pump off, make sure you change the gasket. I'm gonna get these on, no time lapses on this. I'm gonna get the vacuum pump on, and then we'll have a look at the timing belt. Plenty of room to get to the timing belt, so uh, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Got a new belt and water pump to go on. Let me, uh, let me get a few bits done, and we'll see how it looks. That's on, and we've got a brand new vacuum, uh, vacuum tandem pump. Guy in the workshop just down from me used to work for VW. He ended up getting hold of this, don't know how, gave it to me. Big thanks to Eric, nice one bro. That is now on the T5. Brand spanking new, genuine VW Audi tandem pump. Thank you. So it's the evening, we're still on day two. I've been out, done a barbecue for the missus, the kids, they're fed, they're happy, they're sorted. We're back at the workshop and I've completed, I've been busy. Timing belt we saw in the last shot, that's all on, it's all done up and I did uh, go round twice with a 19 mil on a ratchet and can you see in there the pointer it did drop back a bit so always double check that pointer is in that window after you've done two revolutions anyway aircon pumps on alternators on wiring looms all in couple of hoses fuel hoses literally if it had a turbo on it would start if it's going to start Anyway, I'm done as far as I am on that. I need to get the turbo done. Today is Wednesday, by the way. This video will go out Friday, so I haven't got long. And the end of this video, I wanna be driving it up the road. It's the end shot, right? Got the new turbo. I did mention that I got given a engine by a subscriber. Nice one, let VW, big shout out. Got the engine. Injectors are in the engine, happy days, PD-130. We've got the PD-130 turbo. It is knackered, the core is knackered. I've got a new core. That's tonight's task. I'm gonna get this core in and start fitting it onto the engine. I'll get the tripod set up. It's right there, I haven't got to go far. And uh, yeah, let's make a little workbench. Let's get this core in. Last compressor housing bolt, and look. Okay. I'll need to clean that before it goes back together. Um, what? Oh, that's seized. And that side's rattly, she snapped cleaning off. Anyway, I've got one, I've got three more three eighth bolts. Let's have a look. 3.8 or 10 mil. Straight 3.8, that's a little bit loose. So they're meant to be tens. When you get a super expensive kit, they sometimes come with bolts, but not today. Anyway, I'll get these off. Let me struggle. I'm gonna get a proper ammo. We've got one bolt left, and the 3.8 is loose. Now the compressor housing's off. 
we can get a socket onto it, which is a lot nicer. A six-sided hex will fit tighter than a 12-sided. Um, but that's already too small. So now I've got a 9mm, 12-sided. So now it's 9mm. Back to skew with positions. Didn't snap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm gonna quickly clean this up. I'm gonna find the VNT parts and then literally, that's the turbo in there. Other bit on, bosh. I'm gonna clean it out, clean it out in there. This is your VNT. Need to make sure they all fully move before we assemble. Clean it up, clean out in there, and we'll assemble. I thought that was gonna break. Happy days! Just doing a Facebook Marketplace rebuild. Fully rebuilt by Garrett. No, I'm just cleaning. There was loads of oil residue. I did clean it up in there. How did you get that so clean? Oh, it looks hanging actually. I'll tell you in a sec. Cleaned it up in there, machined it, took it all apart. No, nope. soaked it in WD-40, pressure washed it, and then I'm just cleaning in there. But if you remember, we had to beat it to get apart, because it was only 10 minutes ago. That is this little lip here. So I've just cleaned that out, but now I need to clean it in there again, because all the crap's gone in there. But, I'm just getting in here. Got another nozzle ring from upstairs. Couldn't find that one. Luckily, I've got a couple of spares. I haven't got many left. Put it all in, and uh, VNT moves nice and slow. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Anyway, got the cutout where the little arm sits, near the locator pin. I'm gonna hold that up, and this should fit in nicely because we machined it out with the drill. There we go. Right, so I'm going to get my bolts in, get my actuator on, and then we can talk about the set screw, the set stop screw. It is day three of the rebuild, and today is the day we get it running. I got the turbo finished last night, and I got a bit of rebuild in a can on the compressor housing, makes it look a bit better. I did have another actuator, as the old one had a bit of a dent in it. And I have set the actuator rod length to where it was before, original. I counted the thread lengths. We've done the lock knot up. Then when you fit it on the car, you will run live data on it and you'll run specified versus actual boost. If the boost is too low, you'll tighten the rod. If the boost is too high, you'll lengthen the rod. Nice and simple. With regards to the stop screw, which is that little bad boy in there, again, I've set that to exactly the same as it was on the old turbo. Now, if you have too much of that little nut there sticking out, or that little thread there, when the turbo pulls up, can't do it with my thumb, when that pulls up, if it's not far enough out, i.e. a little bit showing, the VNT will close, it will smoke, it will make funny noises, no good. So if you're unsure, I would have a, that little bit there poking out just a little bit further. We've set it to standard, we stick it on the motor and run live data, and it should all be sweet. One quick thing, if you're going for a PD-130 swap or you're upgrading the turbo, you'll see that the original turbo has this type of clamp. Yep. Then the bigger turbos have a free bolt flange. So what you do, you go on the internet, eBay, Darkside Developments, you'll buy one of these but in 10 mil thick and you will chop the flange off your downpipe and then you'll weld on a 10 mil thick plate like that onto your downpipe. Then that's the downpipe sorted. If you can find a downpipe with that already on, happy days. Otherwise, just chop the flange off, weld one of them on, new gasket, all good. I am using the original oil feed pipe and oil return pipe from the smaller turbo. Fits the bigger turbo, 
we're there, we're ready to go. I'm gonna fire this up and start this today. I wanna to drive it, let's wrap this up. Got to fit the turbo, fit the inlet manifold, new oil, new oil filter, new fuel filter, and new gear oil. I still haven't got the drive shafts in. We're gonna fire it up without the front end off so I can see if there's any leaks or anything. Enough chit chat in this video. Let's skip straight to starting. We're done. Oil and filters in, gear oil's in, turbo's on, inlet manifold's on, battery's charged, just need to stick it on. I am gonna turn it over with the crank sensor unplugged for about 10 seconds, get some oil pressure up to the turbo and around the engine. Uh, yeah, happy days. I have got boost pipes off and I haven't done the downpipe yet, the modification. So it might be a bit whooshy, it might be a bit loud. But let's turn it over and see what happens. Just wanged it over for 10 seconds, got some oil pressure up, bigger battery on it, boost pack. Let's have a go. Let's just give it a little encouragement to get that fuel pressure built up. at all no loose wires that's why I took the time to use a spanner on everything I spent five minutes casting my eyes upon everything before I turned the key and I can remember doing every single nut and bolt up and that is key to not leaving anything loose anyway I am going to get the EGR pipe on I need to build the new radiator into the rad pack Get the radiator on, get the slam panel on, some coolant in it. I'll probably just use water for now just in case there's any leaks. I can drain that out. It's not winter. And uh, yeah, we need to drive it up the road, don't we? We need to drive it up the road. I'm going to get at it right now. And that is a good thing to do before you put the front end on. Not only can you see if you've got any leaks and you can get straight at it, gives you that bit of enthusiasm for the last push. Happy days! Well, it's about two hours, maybe three hours since the last shot. Radiator's in, all the pipes are on. It's full of coolant. I say coolant, it's got water in for now. The slam panel's a bit corroded. I think I'm gonna take it off again and, uh, and paint it and make it look pretty and nice. But, we're there. Let's get it out and we'll have a recap on the PD-130 swap. Hopefully I can get it out. It might still sound noisy. Well, it is gonna sound noisy. The downpipe's not attached. Starts right up. No battery light. Oh, we're ready to go. So, if you remember in one of the earlier videos, the air condition, the, uh, the belt is flapping. Well, it needs an alternator pulley. Unfortunately, I didn't get one. I forgot. So, maiden voyage, new engine, PD-130. Clutch is nice and smooth. Gear selectors are smooth too. 
Obviously, when I had it all apart, I did clean and grease everything, whether that be the guide tube, the gear selectors. But yeah, it's real nice. We have got a flappy alternator belt. The pulley on the end of the alternator is seized up and uh, it flaps. So if you've got a 1.9 TDI and uh, the belt is flapping, it's not the alternator belt, it's not the tensioner, it is the pulley on the end. So make sure you do that first. Um, quick turn around here. We've got fresh flip filters, fresh fluids, oil, air filter, fuel filter, gear oil, everything is fresh. Engine is crisp. We've obviously got the downpipe off, as you know, because I haven't got the adapter plate yet. So it's a bit noisier, it's a bit whistly. I can't boot it too much because uh, the exhaust gases are just being dumped in the engine bay. They end up melting a pipe or something like that, and we don't want to do that. But maiden voyage, it is good. It is good. No warning lights at all. Whole world is falling over. I've only spotted two issues. First one being the dipstick. We relocated it and that's now in the middle. Um, it's protruding the radiator fans. So I think I'm gonna have to heat it up with a heat gun and bend it in. And then one of the boost hoses is squashed. Because we've got the bigger turbo, the main boost pipe that come out of the turbo to the intercooler, it's all squashed up. If you've done a PD-130 swap in a T5 and you know what hose I need or the easiest way around it, drop a comment down below and um, yeah, let me know. I'll work it out, but if there's an easy solution, let me know. Anyway, need to hit boost a little bit. Those wishbone bushes are absolutely hanging. It is bumpy on my state, but it definitely boosts. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Well happy with that. I pull over, we're back at the workshop. We we'll pop the bonnet. Oh, those wishbone bushes. We'll have a little look and I'll show you the boost hose I'm on about. I'll show you the dipstick. Next video, I think I might either start the front end conversion or saying that I need to do those wishbone bushes. They are absolutely hanging. We're gonna lower it as well, put it on some lowering springs. The front end's a bit bouncy, so I think the shock absorbers are petered out. Um, I did get a subscriber, a subscriber messaged me, sent me an email. He, uh, he had some T5.1 headlights, the facelift ones he didn't want, so he gave them to me for absolutely free. I sent my own courier, of course, so it didn't cost him any money, but I've got some free headlights. Big shout out to Ian Duckworth. Nice one, buddy, appreciate that. Um, if anyone's got any parts kicking about, T5.1 parts, or T6 parts, if you've got any suspension parts, a lot of people get brand new lowered suspension straight away. If anyone's got any bits kicking about, you want to donate them to the channel, or you want a bit of money for them, email me. Um, drop a comment down below, I'll give you my email address. Any bits are hugely welcome, and I really appreciate it, I really do. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's have a look at the boost hoses, let's check for any oil leaks, and let's wrap this one up. It runs well. First of all, let's check for any leaks. Oh yeah, absolutely bone dry. No oil, no gear oil, no coolant, nothing. Happy with that. Um, I still need to put some air con gas in it, but that's fine. So if we go straight in, check out that booze pipe. She is kinked and it is a bit tight up here. So I believe this hard pipe is wrong. If anyone's got any info on what boost hose I need 
or what I need to do to make that fit better, let me know because that can't stay. That is a no-no. And the dipstick tube, we've got no radiator fans in at the moment, that's fine. I plan to have the front end back off again because I want to paint this. Look at the state of that. Gonna uh, wire wheel it back to bare metal, primer it, paint it nice shiny gloss black, so I want it to be nice. Anyway, this is way too close to the radiator. I think I'm gonna heat this up with a heat gun carefully, and I'm gonna bend it in. It'd be nice if it sat in here somewhere. Um, yeah, well anyway, it is running really good. I am super happy with that, literally, really good. That'll about do it for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And as I say, if you've got any T5.1 bits or any facelift bits, you don't mind donating to the channel or you want a bit for them, I'll send a courier, I'll take them off your hands and I'll be more than happy. That is it from this one, guys. I'm out.